Hello there. Thank you for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channel's Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, Web3 is an idea for a new iteration of the World Wide Web, which incorporates concepts such as decentralization, blockchain technologies, and token-based economics. Now, clearly, this will have a strong emphasis on decentralized applications and make extensive use of blockchain-based technologies and also make use of machine learning and artificial intelligence to help empower more intelligent and adaptive applications especially in businesses now that is going to be our focus today on the show but before we get into the nitty-gritty of this let's see what made the trends in the past week there you go those were the trends in the past week but joining us to look at today's topic we have with us right here in the lagos studio sam harvard he is the founder of lap a digital skill university and a fast-growing affiliate network from africa he is on a mission to create five million jobs in the next five years. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, Sam. Thank you very much, Matthias. Of course, you're welcome. Let's even look at what Web 3.0 is. I mean, there's okay. this noise around it, but you know, when, you, when you're even looking at that, what do we mean by that? In the first okay, place? I, I think you cannot successfully understand what Web 3 is if you do not understand Web 1 and, two. and Web 2, all yeah. right? Because it's a succession. So Web 1 actually is the founder or the foundation of the internet where everything is content-based and just text-based, so more or less like encyclopedia or Wikipedia on screen, all right? So you just go there to get information on something that you want. There is no interaction. Mm -hmm. And the real purpose of internet is for connectivity, really, and that is limited. So but Web 2.0 moved from just text to pictures, mm -hmm. then to video. And that's what introduced what we know as social media, with the Facebook, the Google, the YouTube, and all of that. Yeah. But something interesting happened in that leap from web one to web two is the fact that interaction now began online and the fact that through machine learning and some other algorithm they are able to study our behavior all right the web developers different websites are able to study our behaviors and use that to define what we see and what happens right now is what you are seeing in lagos is different from what they're seeing in london uh, when they visit the same facebook for example what's yeah. on your feed is different from what's on my field based on all the information we are fed the internet uh, in the process of interacting with it now that came with a bit of a problem and that problem is privacy issue i mean that's like a summary of the problem <laughs> yeah which now means that most of the things about you are no longer secret. I mean, I could discuss with you about gaming, and the next minute after leaving here, I put on my phone, and you I'm seeing ads, ads yeah. talking about, where, uh, what's it called, PlayStation, and what have you, and all that, and you're wondering. Sometimes you're just having a conversation, and what you're just talking about, the moment you go to social media, you start to see that, and you're wondering, are they monitoring me? Yeah. Who is checking so, me around and all? The, you, you know, so you know, especially now in respect to that, you know, you know, when when you check when you're using apps and yes. you, you check those um, uh, what's it called uh, terms of agreement, yes. you know, when you the check them without is. reading, you know, yes, I, I think in in a way you give them access to your microphone. Yes, yeah, so we willingly give those permission. All right, we willingly do that, even yeah. though most of us don't like it, uh, we do that all the time, and that really has been the one of the major limitation with Web 2.0. So Web 3.0 which is now the new face, the future, yeah. is solving that problem using what we know as the blockchain technology with machine learning and AI yeah. to still be able to give you the best experience for connectivity through the internet, which is what the internet is meant for, but also make sure that your data are protected, which the biggest word about Web3 is actually de uh, decentralization, yeah. which is no one organization or big tech company controls all the data you can now own the data you put online not because one company manages and owns everything so that's the future we're going into where you can own the data and the information that you put online and you can even assess the internet with anonymity all right you can do different kinds of things which which some might think or which some might say is a problem when you access the internet you know anonymously and you know you begin to do things that are injurious or that, harmful to other people you know the interesting thing about human beings is as you solve one problem another one comes up <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you can never really get out of it yeah sam again um so if you're looking at this now from the business perspective 
um, you know, what should businesses be doing? I mean, we understand that this is also going to create like a new, um, you know, job opportunities for yes. people. So you have uh, EI enormous. experts, evangelists, you have machine enormous. learning experts and all of that. So, I mean, people like that are going to come up. But, you know, what can these do for businesses? How can businesses key into this as it's been adopted? Awesome. The interesting thing is that we were late for Web 1.0. We were late for 2.0, but we cannot afford to be late for 3.0. There are people who serve Africa, the entertainment side of the internet. I mean, people create the things that we use. At least, is there any social media app right now that is made from Africa? I mean, we are consumers. We cannot afford to be consumer now that it's about the birth of the 3.0. And how do we do this? We have to position ourselves as businesses or business owners or even individual to be at the creative end, creating things that will be needed for the Web.3. For example, Facebook changed their name to Mera. Yeah. Why? Because they wanted to be known for more than just social media. They have seen and understood that interaction, human interaction is going to move from where it is right now, which is, of course, what COVID brought to us. Because after COVID, during COVID, people realized that you can actually live life and interact with people without leaving your space. And that becomes the future that we would have to accept. Now, you can do businesses. I do business all over the world without leaving where I live. Most times I do connect. As a matter of fact, every week I do connect with the people across over 14 countries online who trust the things that I'm doing. So every business needs to build themselves up from where they are, uh, the bricks and mortar, the physical interaction, and start to utilize the tools that the Web3 is bringing. Talking about IoT, Internet of Things, or the blockchain of things, mm -hmm. understanding how to digitize their business processes and using all the tools that are available. One, you can be a user. Secondly, you can be a creator. And the beginning point of all of this is about learning. First, start the research all right that's why big corporations spend billions of dollars on research and development as businesses you have to research what is this web 3 they are talking about how does it impact my business how does it we don't run we don't have any office with our business and we run several you know turnovers are very huge and that's because we've understood where the world is going into using the process of the internet which means in connectivity and interaction mm -hmm. and businesses can study that and apply it to their own business processes because that's the only way you will win if not your story will be worse than nokia Jeez. <laughs> i hope it doesn't get to that point <laughs> but so, so my 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 own, my own one of my major problems is, like you said, you know, we're not creators, we're consumers. So how do we move from this? How do we change this narrative? I, I think the first thing is to start from one person to the other. If I'm seeing a vision about what the future is going to be, and Africa has to be at the forefront of creating and leading the narrative that we're 3.0 is going to bring to the world with blockchain, AI, machine learning, augmented and virtual Reality. realities. I have to tell everyone, and that is one of the things that we do, educating people about digital skills and things can actually help move them from the normal, we're searching for a job, we're trying to look for a job. We're trying to create 5 million jobs, not sweeping the road, shoemaking kind of job. No, we're talking about tech and things that can actually make us sell Africa, sell Nigeria to the rest of the world using this same platform we're talking about, Web 3.0. So from one person to the other, that's how the fire is going to light. Wow. Whatever you know, just pass it, because the purpose of knowledge really is for you to share it to the next person. Well, indeed, I hope um, a lot of people would take that message, you know, and move. But let me hold you there for a bit. We'll take a quick break. And of course, when we come back, uh, we'll get more on the adoption of Web 3.0. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us our panelists uh, right here in the Lagos studio as well as via Zoom from London. And we're looking at the adoption of Web 3.0, the opportunities as well as the challenges that lie therein. Just before we went on the break, uh, Sam, you talked about, you know, how we can move forward. But let's uh, look at the challenges that are in the adoption that people might face, you know, in trying to adopt all of this. You know, what are the likely challenges that could be faced? All right, the first one would be trust. Every time something new comes up, um, a lot of people are too slow, not because they don't see the good in it, but because they're just too 
careful. They're trying to be very careful yeah. uh, so that they would not fall into something they do not understand. People fear change more than anything else. So that's the first thing we're going to see. And another thing are uh, the, um, what they call these people, the uh, these theorists that come, conspiracy theorists, yeah. Conspiracy. And they, they, they link it to uh, it's the Antichrist or it is this, it is that. And all of that, you understood what <laughs> happened during COVID. So we're going to have to fight with all of these things. But I believe that as much as all these things will come up and truly, like I said, solve a problem, another one comes up. You solve that one, another one comes up. It's all also going to come with a lot of issues that needs to be solved. One of them will be um, anonymity, where people now control the content that they have, even though it could be something that is strong political content or yeah. something that is very offensive. But because you now own the right to it, the platform that is hosting some of this content cannot pull it down. Before now, everything you put on the internet stays there and then the platform where you upload can decide what they want to show or not but because you own your content now it means people can use app to create things that are wrong about you and still be able to serve and share it without anybody being able to do something about it so these are some of the things that most of the technology companies that are going to lead this move that are already leading this move are looking into to make sure that people's safety all right is also being protected and what people are exposed to is also being protected as they go further. How do you see the implementation of, like you said, we have the NDPR, like, you know, policies. We, I think we have them, but, you know, one of the problems is the implementation, which you also rightly said. So what do you think we should be doing differently now that we're moving to this Web 3.0, you know, and, again, it comes with a lot of things, IoT, blockchain, smart homes. We're even trying to do a smart city. You know, mm -hmm. so there's actually going to be a lot of data that will be out there. Mm -hmm. But, again, privacy would be a big issue so we have the laws but implementation seems to be an issue so what should we be doing differently in terms, especially in terms of, the... of implementation <sighs> All right, I think one of the major things to focus on will be communication. The more we talk about these issues, the easier it will be to scale through and above them. Uh, policies can exist, but if it's not well discussed, a lot of people do not even understand the adoption and how they have come to actually navigate the process of migration from one thing you are used to to the other thing that, of course, is coming. Now, the good thing is there's a lot of talk that are already going on about this. Um, even before it becomes the mainstream thing versus what happened with 2.0 yeah. or 1.0. So the good thing is the more we talk about them, the easier it will be for people to adopt both policies and how exactly it affects people's privacy and the safety of data. So the more we talk about it, I'm sure, the easier it will be to actually scale through this audio. Well, so we'll keep the conversation going, uh, but for now we have to hold it for a bit. And of course, uh, we'll come back to it some other time and also talk more about it so people get to know awesome. and, you know, adopt and see how it helps them. But I have to say thanks uh, to you, Sam Harvard, Thank for you joining us today and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. Of course, you're welcome. And that's where we are. We'll now take the most videos on our YouTube channel in the past week as we wrap the show. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now. Thank you.